Hello everyone, I'm Robin and these are my reflections and today we are talking about the Wave Speakers Tarot. Artwork by NDR, written by Anna Jedrzewski. I'm sorry if I've said that incorrectly. This is a new release. Um, you can find it on, it's a mass market release from US Game Systems. You can find it on Amazon or on their website. Shout out to US Games for sending this over to me for purposes of review. So this one is like, if, a, if someone took museum artwork or like museum statues and turn them into video games. I feel like this is what they would look like. You know what I mean? Like it's that kind of artwork. It's so cool. It's like animated, but classical kind of mixed together. I really it's enjoy the it. The Way Seekers Tarot artfully pays homage to classic tarot traditions, including the simplicity of Marseille and the rich symbolism of Smith Waite. Powerful figures in the majors and the court cards take their inspiration from Greco-Roman mythology and offer bold new perspectives for the Wayseeker. Each hand-drawn illustration in the 78-card deck is enlivened with jewel-toned color accents. The 60-page booklet offers tarot seekers profound guidance with, with both traditional associations and applied interpretations for each card. All right, so this is the box it's really cool they've aged this purple on the side and so it just i don't know it just feels like there's something about this design that i really just enjoy it's my style you know like it's my it's my jam let's take a look at this adorable little guidebook the deck is a little bit smaller than a normal tarot size so everything feels just a little bit smaller just like about i would say a couple centimeters shorter i'll show you in a minute Introduction. NDR has brought the full force of ancient Greco-Roman patriarchal mythology to his tarot rendering and combined it with the dyna dynamism and bold perspective of modern graphic novels. He has, however, also created these powerful illustrations through a decidedly intuitive and nurturing filter. The simple pale backgrounds of the Wayseekers tarot indicate the blank field through which the artist called to his illustrations and let them take shape. The mix and match of symbolism, the sometimes intense emotion in the faces, and the bold colors that elevate the traditionally based renderings to a new consciousness level all contribute to making the Wayseekers Tarot a deck that holds secrets that only become apparent with repeated use. Working through the deck, I sometimes felt as if Pamela Coleman Smith had tapped NDR on the shoulder and sent him the insight behind the messages she so diligently channeled through A.E. Waite's masculine perspective. Now, for the majors, you get, a, you know, more information than a minor. So you get the number and name of the card, some information about um, just the interpretation. And then you get what they call an, a traditional association, which are traditional keywords. And then you get an applied interpretation. So this is for the full. It says the seeker has zeroed in on the masculine or mental aspect, aligned it with the feminine or intuitive aspect, rein in, reined in the desire nature, and is heading off on an adventure that has his or her full attention. In the highest sense, the fool is abandoning himself or herself to the fates. It is an exercise in faith. At the lower end of the vibrational scale, it is folly. Without true faith, built on a solid foundation of experience, surrender is just giving up. Traditional associations, adventure, spontane spontaneous journey, wonder, trust in the universe, and misguided beliefs. Applied interpretation, calculated risks. Before you decide, look at the situation all the way around the circle, 360 degrees. Consider all the potential consequences then decide whether the possible rewards are worth the risk. Trust your instincts, but don't be foolhardy. And that's what you get sort of for the majors. For the minors, you get less. You don't get that full paragraph. You get, you know, the traditional association keywords and then a few uh, applied inter interpretations, um, but you don't get that paragraph of explanation. So for the Ace of Wands, for instance, the traditional associations here are birth, beginnings, invention, source, inheritance. And for the applied interpretation, interpretations, you get full power of the life force is now available. Direct your energy toward the goals of your choice. And for two of wands, courage, influence, seriousness, immense grandeur, dominion. And then applied interpretation here is something has been set into motion. The results are still unclear. 
maintaining the balance between will and desire is of prime importance at this stage. And so it goes on like that. Okay, so the suits haven't changed elements. You still have fire for wands, swords for air, pentacles for earth, cups for water. And in the back, you do get uh, a spread. Or, yeah, it's just the generator spread, which is specific to the deck for your way seeking. And then you get about the artist and about the author. So that's the guidebook. Let's take a look at the cards. I, I put them in order. Um, again, I think they came in the same order, but I, I can't be sure anymore. I've, been, I've had this for a little while and I've been using it i really like it at the bottom you get a, a banner with the number and roman numerals and the name of the card for the majors um the edge of the card has been darkened to kind of bring the light to the center of the card so it's like a border but not and it really is nice for when it's laid out it looks very beautiful and i'll show you that at the end the colors are strategically placed you can t kind of tell where, um, you know, some of most of them towards the middle, sometimes scattered around the card in other places. Wherever you're going to see um, the pillars, you know that you're to be thinking about polarities. And wherever you see the wings, you know that you're to be thinking about like um, otherworldly existences or, you know, I don't know, divine guidance, stuff like that. Um, is what they've put on there. So this lover's card is quickly becoming one of my favorites. It's beautiful, it's energetic. Really love the movement in a lot of these drawings. Um, the people look like they could walk right out of cards. <laughs> Most of them. Like I said, it feels animated, but for some reason paused. Like as if I paused it on a, paused, paused them as they were moving. Um, the hermit. The Wheel of Fortune. Look at this. It's gorgeous. Pencil shadings. Bringing the light. He's hanging down here. His clothes falling off. This guy, he's got his clothes together. He's crawling up. Crawling to the top. Like, okay, so the wheel is turning. And maybe there is something you can do about it. You know what I mean? Maybe you can crawl towards that divine guidance to, to find your way back up rather than just letting your crown fall off down here or maybe just hold on for dear life. Like, which one are you? Where are you right now in your life? Where do you have the energy to be, you know? Justice. The hanged man. I find these cards to be extremely intuitive and I think that they hit, um, they open up for me, that sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Third eye re types of readings. The devil. Look at him. He's like scratching his way, stretching and creating things. Dark, but everything he's creating is dark, right? The tower. This is, this, sometimes it does things like this, and this is the stuff that really reminds me of like comic books and things like that. It's like if if it was a comic book about Greek statues, this would be what it would look like. <laughs> um, the sun. Judgment. Even the hands here. And our world dancing the world dancing with her baton she's still there you know still within the the wreath still has her batons and her wrap but she's moving you know rather than just standing there right and so now we're into the ace of wands they are not color coded the colors are different for all you know on all the cards so it's not like all ones are one color or all um all the twos are blue or anything like that they're just um kind of mixed up not that i've noticed anyway four of wands it does um some of the cards do seem a little pippish but i don't know if i would call this a pip deck i mean it is a pip deck but there's a lot more than just the pips on the cards the elements are there or the implements are there like you've got your wands 
but you also have other things in the image, you know? I would call this an abstract deck. I wouldn't call it Pip. Um, I don't know. You'll have to let me know what you think. Because I think there's a there's like a fine line between what is a Pip deck and what is an illustrated deck, you know? Um, to me, this is illustrated. This one feels a little pippy, pippish. But this one is illustrated. It's just illustrated to me in an abstract way, you know. But that's just my opinion. Page of Wands. Knight of Wands. The Queen and King. Ace of Cups. Beautiful. Two of Cups. So they're taking the people out of this one and just brought in everything else. The Three of Cups, same with this one. Four. The Five. I love this Five of Cups. I think that it's so interesting. Um, because you don't just have this filled cups, but you have this chain indicating that you're stuck in this emotion, like trapped and it's not just a chain or just a trap, but there's like this bolt where you can tighten, you know, and, and maybe close it or even loosen it. And that's just so interesting. And when you're, when you're reading with something like that, it just opens up story. It opens up, I don't know, just thoughts that may not no normally come to me when I'm reading with a regular deck. And then, you know, the color on the card is going to make me look for that color in any oracle decks that I'm using. I like to mix it with oracles. It's been really nice reading with this deck and it opens up like a deeper place in my mind. I've been enjoying it. Now, as far as diversity goes, there's none. I haven't seen any. There's a, I mean, there might be one or two brown people in here, but for the most part, this is not a diverse deck in my opinion. Um, not in the way that I look for diversity. There are some people that look a little older, but there's not a whole lot of diversity in body type or skin tone. However, I don't know that I, I miss it in this because it's not, there's not a lot of people in it altogether for one thing. Um, and I don't know, it's just, it's doing other things for me. So I'm not looking for people. I'm not looking to see myself in it I'm more looking to feel my way through this one so I'm okay four of swords but if you're looking for a diverse deck this is not going to be it for you six of swords beautiful the seven look at this eight of swords just the way the swords are in front of them. It's like they're back there. They could, I mean, they're behind the swords. There's no trapping here. What What's being trapped is you, you can't get to them or they can't get to you, right? So then what does that make them or what does that make you? It's so interesting. Nine of swords. And it's always interesting when there's a person in the card because there aren't a whole lot of people, you know? So then you're like, oh, well, what does this person represent? You know, <laughs> Page of Swords. The Knight. Queen. King. Ace of Pentacles with a hand there. The Two of Pentacles, another hand. Look at this little ship. <laughs> the hand is so much bigger than the waves. The Three of Pentacles. You know, this is making me want to look up this, um, piece of architecture to see what the history is behind it because I feel like it must mean something you know <laughs> that they chose 
this. I think it's, what is this called? I can't remember what it's called. Uh, Four of Pentacles. The Five of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles. Seven of Pentacles. Eight of Pentacles. Yeah, I thought I was looking at like the inside of a machine. Um, but it doesn't look like it, does it? I don't know. What do you guys think about this one? Interesting. I'd have to think on that a lot more. Nine of Pentacles. This one is more typical RWS. The Ten, also. The Page of Pentacles. Looks very young. The Knight of Pentacles. He's holding it. He's holding a head, I think. In his hand. Is that a head? It looks like eyes, right? Am I crazy? What am I seeing here? Do I see two eyes and it's like a head? Or, or not? Let me know what you see. The queen and the king. And that's the end. Let's see the backs close. Okay, so let's take a look at the size. I don't, did we look at the size? I feel like we might have already, but just in case we haven't. This is a normal tarot size card. They are a little bit shorter, you can see. So um, they're the same width, but just a little bit shorter than a normal tarot card so they shuffle great for me because my hands are short and the full size cards um on this standard this is the standard us games um like semi semi gloss sock that they have this sort of like slippy buttery sock and um this sock on a standard card is sometimes difficult for me to get my hands around but on this size oh yeah <laughs> No problem. Um, the overhand is nice and, ooh, we have a card. Nice and buttery. Because it's that buttery US Games stock that we are used to. This is their, what I would call their, this is what I would call their standard stock. Even though now they have so many different stocks that <laughs> it's hard to like know what is standard from them now they have a lot of different great card slots but all right so swords I'm take a look at that and then i think we should also take a look oh look there's the hierophant we'll take a look at those two let me zoom you in okay here we go read it for yourself if you like it says the hierophant the seeker has demonstrated the ability to turn chaos into structure and thus society begins to turn him or her for guidance, turn to him or her for guidance. The seeker wears the symbols of initiation through the three levels of body, mind, and spirit. Those who seek guidance don't always understand the level at which the seeker now functions. The journey of discovery continues and many interpret that to mean that the wisdom on offer is rudimentary. Only those who are ready to advance will recognize the elite opportunity that has been presented to them. Traditional associations, dogma, ceremony, adherence to the accepted forms of society, formalized religion, applied interpretation. Look beyond the public ritual and find the hidden power that is within it. The secret wisdom is carried forward in plain view, but only those who have prepared themselves will see it. Four of Swords. So here's the Four of Swords. You can take a look at all of those if you want. Screenshot them. I'm just going to read the four. It says Four of Swords. Traditional associations. Rest after battle, relaxation, release, exile, and banishment. Applied interpretations. Further effort will prove futile. Withdraw and release emotional attachments. The next step will be apparent after a period of resting. So those are the meanings. So I think this guidebook is, I mean, it. it if you need, if you want a guidebook and you need something, there's something here. It's very Marseille. I think if you're a Marseille reader or if you like very sharp, uh, clear cut, specific um, fortune tellery style interpretations, this this guidebook is going to be good. If that is not your style, you may want to get another book 
that one might um, might not be exactly what you're looking for. Because I know for one that I was reading, the Three of Swords, for instance. Yeah, so for the applied inter interpretation for the Three of Swords, it said the card can signal death in some form on the physical plane, whether emotional, symbolic, or material. There is a real loss to be dealt with. The pain is great, but so are the lessons to be learned. I mean, that's a good interpretation, but it's very sharp, right? And um, so I think that sometimes where it's just not that serious, you know, <laughs> for me, you know, I will say these cards do take me there. Um, I just, I, sometimes I just want to do a daily poll and I end up with this deep introspective reading, you know, when it, when I'm using these. So, you know, <laughs> but the, um, let's take a look at some of my pairings that I use that I enjoy. All right. So I find this deck to be extremely airy. And as an airy deck, I wanted to bring it back down to earth a little bit. So I used it with a couple of earthy decks. And the first one I um, want to show you today is the Sylvan Kind Oracle. Um, the colors on the Wayseekers Tarot are so, um, there's so many colors and they're so varied that it really goes with a lot of things. It goes with, I, I want to say it goes with just everything I put it with, in my opinion. Like it just looked, it didn't look bad with anything <laughs> that I put it with. Um, so, you know, there's that, that, that's always a bonus when you don't need to buy anything to go with it. You probably have something in your house. Let me zoom in into account there. This tree is opening their internal heart chakra and green is a, a heart chakra color. So I would say that, um, if this is the truth, then this is what, you know, if this is what you're putting forth, then this is the truth. So, so if you're saying that you're bored and you're not interested or you're not feeling connected to something, it could be that you're not actually bored, it's that you're not confident and you don't feel like you can do it. And instead of admitting that and finding your strength in that, um, you're leaning into this whole, oh, I'm not interested, I don't wanna do it, it's not that, it's not that great, it's not that cool, whatever, and, um, that's not serving you. It's not serving you. So I think I like, you know, that's the kind of message I would give if I saw those. Six of Wands with Trust and the Three of Swords. If I'm reading the Three of Swords as like an expansion of thoughts, it could be that maybe we don't, we're trusting, we're, oh, we're extending our trust to too many people. Um, maybe people are acting like they think of you as being, um, Maybe you're getting too big for your shoes and then extending your trust to too many people. So maybe bring it back down a little bit. Independence. Oh, with the devil and the seven of wands. It is a hard battle, right? Like if you are stuck in that devil moment, if, if where you are is here, and, you know, he's creating and, and doing things, but everything is black, right? It's yellow and mimicking this color here. The waves mimicking this winding water here. Okay. Seven of Wands. I don't know. Something about the shape of this and the stars is mimicking what I see here. I like, you know, I don't know. I just really enjoyed looking at these and just seeing what I can find in the images, you know? So definitely really enjoyed this pairing. This is the Sylvan Kind. I won't, I don't want to talk too much longer because I have a couple of more and I'm like, I could be here all day with this, but this is the Sylvan Kind. <laughs> Another, ooh. Can you see it? Another earthy deck that for some reason I pulled out was the Earth Power Oracle. Now, I hadn't used this deck in forever, like forever, ever. And for some reason, when I got the Wayseekers, I just wanted to use it with this. <laughs> I don't know what, what the hell was going on. But these two were just calling to me. And it was giving me all this like, I don't know, just like woo messages, you know? So let's see what we got. We have the star and the magician with Magdalena 
Bay Baja. I birth new concepts and ideas easily. I am full of flowfulness in every part of my life. Grace permeates my being. Look at that. I mean, need I say more? Eight of Wands and the Four of Wands with Delphi. And the message here is, I receive divine messages constantly and clearly. Eight of Wands. <laughs> I look for the truth in any situation. I know myself. Power comes from the inside out, and that is a grounding thing, right? So Four of Wands, grounding yourself so that you can then receive your power. Finding the place where that power, um, where, it, where it comes from, where it originates. So we have the Nine of Cups with the Empress. I am fertile. <laughs> oh my goodness. And flowful. I release all stagnation and depression. I move and choose gracefully. I am spiraling outwards, full of growth and love with the Nine of Cups, the Wish Filled card, and the Empress, fertile giving, loving empress, right? Five of cups and the king of wands. See what we get here. I do not resist change. Change can be a creative force. I can build upon my strengths. I mean, these love each other. I, I, okay, I'm going to stop there. Those were the two earth, air, energy pairings that I had. A more fun pairing that I enjoyed was this Heavenly Angels. Something about the artwork in this deck, I, I think I said already, um, really, really gave me comic book vibes. And this one gives me comic book vibes too. So I pulled it out and I wanted to see what I would get. And I kind of like this again. Azariel, Azariel with the sun and the page of swords. And Azariel, I want to say, is the moon, the angel of the moon and makes wishes come true. I like the burst and the burst here. Page of Swords coming through. Very nice. And we have the Knight of Pentacles with Manakil and the Page of Wands. And I want to say that Manakil is the one that like helps you with your sadness. The angel that helps with sadness and melancholy. The Lovers with Chalkatura and the Three of Wands. I'm not sure about Chalkatura, so let's look her up. Protects from evil. Okay. She protects from evil. Metatron with the Five of Wands and the Hanged Man. Metatron is an archangel of prophetic visions with the Five of Wands with the Hanged Man, you know, um, changing perspectives based on prophetic visions. Six of Cups with Israfil. Israfil? And the Five of Pentacles. Let's see who Israfil is. I do have to use the guidebook with this one, but it's a short guidebook. The guidebook is, I'll show you just a second. Okay, so the, the guidebook is very, very small, like paragraphs. So this that's okay. Warns and protects. So it says, the angel who will blow the trumpet of judgment on the day of apocalypse. Oh, interesting. Okay, so that was this one. This is a... Another sort of comic booky pairing that I had. And I had one more that I was really liking for like a color energy pairing. This one is the Oracle of the Seven Energies. Um, I apologize. I don't really have the box at the moment. It's put away. I've, I've been using this deck quite a bit. And um, when I use them, I, I, I put the box away and I just keep the cards out on my desk. And I just don't feel like going to dig it out. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So a higher view with page of pentacles and the wheel of fortune. Okay. The queen of pentacles, a powerful move with the fool. Wow. This looks like a big pentacle. <laughs> I'm not sure what, a I mean, the powerful move, I mean, I can take that as the the sentence here says, or the phrase here says, but I feel like there's always a deeper message in the book with these with this deck. So sometimes I like to, all the time, I like to use the book with this one as well. The Chariot with the Nine of Swords and Roots of Abundance. And then Judgment with Shining Through.
through, I like judgment and shining through with the five of swords, cutting through and shining through. And Knight of Cups, um, last one with endless possibilities and the two of wands. I like two of wands with endless possibilities. I feel like the Knight of Cups is also very optimistic, endless possibilities type of dude, right? And I love the color and the colors in this deck because it's a ch it's a chakra deck. So um, I like kind of looking for the color here. I see a lot of blue here, so I would think that this would be talking about our th our throat chakra, um, listening and speaking, delivering messages, maybe some sort of presentation. Um, there's endless possibilities there. Loving it. Loving, loving, loving this one. Let me show you the last one that I have here on my desk before my light goes away. All right. So the last one is the Modern Nirvana Oracle. Now, Modern Nirvana for me is a very heady deck. It's a very, um, airy deck. It's not heady like the way Seekers Tarot is, but it's airy. It's thought provoking. So I thought that they make a nice, um, pairing because, Modern Nirvana, while it is thought provoking, is a, it gives a little levity. Where this one can get a little, can be a little sharp. This one is much softer. So I like I, I like them together. So here we have a nice a nice little nice little out the gate message. We got the Two of Cups with the Three of Cups and greatness. You know, so reflection with the Ten of Wands and the Knight of Swords. So we're telling the truth. What is really causing you all of this burden? What is it? Is it that you're not saying what you should be saying? Is it that you're not telling yourself the truth? Do we need to look at ourselves and our words and what we're, what we're using our words for? Would that alleviate some of our burden? Are we taking on other people's words, you know, and letting that causing us a burden? We've got boat with the ace of cups and the ace of swords. We're moving, refreshing our emotions, refreshing our thoughts, our um, ways of thinking. Initiation with the nine of wands and the two of swords. Wow. Whew, that's kind of like, whew. Initiation with the Nine of Wands is just making me think like, you know, like you've been through it, but you're almost there, but you've got some ways to go and you cannot, you, if you want to get in, you, with an initiation, it's like, if you want to get in, you have to stay in the trials, right? So Eight of Swords, uh, here's that Eight of Swords with protection and the Eight of Pentacles. The last one, Transcendence with the Page of Cups and the Six of Pentacles. All right. And so those are the pairings that I have. I also use the deck with the Amenti Oracle a little bit, but to be honest, I really prefer the Modern Nirvana to my Amenti Oracle. So I didn't use it that much with the Amenti Oracle because I just, I prefer to use, if I'm going to reach for one of those, I usually reach for the Modern Nirvana. So that's that's all my thoughts on the Wayseekers Tarot. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this deck. If you've picked it up, what you've been using it with, how does it read for you? Um, is it activating your intuition the way it's activating mine? <laughs> or does it just, maybe it just activates my curiosity. I don't even know what, but I really, it's just, it wakes up all of the, my, uh, my Gemini, you know, <laughs> it wakes up all of my Gemini. So I really have been loving this. I can't, it's hard for me to put it down. It was hard for me to even do this walkthrough because I kept shuffling it. Every time I would put it back in order, I would shuffle it and then I'd be like, oh, I'll do it next week. You know, <laughs> I'll do it next week. <laughs> if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more from me, you can subscribe. I release videos every couple of days regarding Tarot and Oracle and I'd love to have you. Um, I will put an Amazon affiliate link down in the description box below. If you decide to pick it up from Amazon, I would love it if you would use the link because it helps my it helps me, gives me a couple of cents and it doesn't cost you anything. So I appreciate everybody who's been using those links when they do decide to purchase from Amazon. US Games has had a few new releases this year so far and I've done some walkthroughs. So I'm going to um, put in the cards up here 
at different points throughout the video um, a couple of other decks that are new out from them right now. If you want to see those walkthroughs, you can check down below the description box. You'll see those cards kind of listed there. Um, or I always put links for my other tarot walkthroughs and oracle walkthroughs. So you can just click those playlists as well. Until I see you guys next time, stay safe and be blessed. Bye-bye.